So I don't know about you, I mean, when these stories, most of these stories were happening, my family was digging potatoes somewhere in deepest somewhere. <laughs> but I think it's kind of important to connect with those ancestors that they don't teach us about so often in the history class. Yesterday I stood on Blackheath once again. And I remembered how when I was a little girl, my mum used to take me to the library there for story time. I thought my mum would do that. Yeah, lucky man. <laughs> but I remember the, library, the librarian there so clearly. She was an old Jamaican lady with high cheekbones, silvery hair and a silk-lined voice. And she used to say that we have to listen to her stories very carefully because they were old and fragile and had been carried from her grandma's, grandma's, grandma down to us. And she said that when you want people to wake up to a story, you have to say this. Crick! 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 Whose streets? Whose streets? The problem is they rob the poor. The problem is they rob the poor. The problem is a needless war. The problem is a needless war. The problem is the wealthiest people in the city are living off the fat of the struggles of others and the year is... 1381. East of Deptford, south of the Thames on a mound of earth, two men toss a coin to decide who will speak first. John Ball steps up. It is the stories that have brought him here. They lodge themselves beneath his skin, so what can he do but pull them out? He plants his feet on the sun sucked grasses and faces the gathered thousands, opens his arm up over the brow of the hill, inhales the sweet summer air, sees how Across the heat haze and the shimmering Thames, the church spires gleam like shining swords, slicing upwards through the chaos of the common man. Sees the power and the glory of a gilded kingdom built upon the backs of a people forbidden to hear, even in their own mother tongue, the stories from the Bible that the whole thing is founded on. So what can he do but pass the stories on? John Paul says, My good people, if God had meant there to be lords and slaves, he would have made them in the beginning. But the good book that they gave us tells us that he made one man and one woman equal. My good people, things can never go well in England, nor ever shall, till everything be made common, and the lords are no greater masters than ourselves. What reason can they give that they are greater lords than we, save by making us toil and labour so that they can spend? They have ermine and fur while we wear coarse cloth. They have spices and good bread and we the drawings of the chaff. They live in fine houses and manners and we the pain and travail, the rain and the wind in the field and it is from our labour that they get the means to maintain their estate and there is no one who will hear us or help us or do us justice. So let's go to the king and demand a remedy, or else provide a remedy ourselves. And if we go together, if we go together, if we go together, all manner of people that are now in bondage will follow us with the intent to be made free. And as one, the thousands turn and march towards the Thames. Whose streets? Whose streets? The problem is they rob the poor. The problem is they rob the poor. The problem is a needless war. The problem is a needless war. The problem is the wealthiest people in the city are living off the fat of the struggles of others and the year is... 2009. It was a tremor on the footsie, a flicker on the TV, a ton of fickle figures and tickled statistics that brought a trickle of picketers and protesters streaming out onto the city streets that bright spring morning, including me and my mate Dave. Sweat on our necks in the prickling air, watching the numbers swell as the economy shrank and the bankers looked down at us from their glass towers.
Uh, obviously, there are quite a lot of stones in the city, aren't there? So should we narrow it down a bit? Somewhere between St Swithin's Lane and Walbrook, just around the corner from Cannon Street Station. With me? Just around the corner from Cannon Street Station. Only one stone has stayed in its place since Brutus laid it when he founded Britain. It was the cornerstone of a temple to the Roman gods, and when he placed it down, Brutus said that for as long as it remains in its place, London will flourish, and that anyone with a true heart who strikes it may determine Britain's destiny. Not bad, eh? The sultan's mind of centuries served and passed it. Now it sits in the shadow of an English heritage metal grill beneath a Nike advert. And here I come, just yesterday, brandishing my umbrella, running through the streets towards it. Past it! The train at Platform 6 will depart in three minutes. So I run, feet stumbling over concrete steps and shiny surfaces, slipping over french fries, pushing past the French guys, gaggled together, trying to comprehend the tube map, tumbling past the lady with her walking stick and chopper, running for the train at Platform 6 will depart in two minutes. So I run, wondering why I always leave it so late, heel smoking, heart thumping, lungs heaving, coat flapping, feet flinging and scattering, footsteps out behind me, run as if my life and all that it contains depends upon catching this train at Platform 6 will depart in one minute. Because I always do, don't you? I always do run like there will never, not ever be another train. Even though I know it's a short journey from here to there, from the shining city to the stacked up terraces, from Cannon Street to Blackheath, from Itsu Sushi to Kentucky Chicken Cottage. Just in time. This train is ready to depart. It's nine minutes.